and welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori and me, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. Today, we have Team Berkeley to talk about their upcoming releases and some backlist titles. So at first, I'm going to start, I'm going to call their names and they're going to introduce themselves. So Stephanie, Jessica, and Erin. So Stephanie, you want to go first? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, hi, my name is Stephanie Felty. I'm a publicist at Berkeley, and I work on pretty much any type of genre fiction you can think of. So that includes romance, science fiction fantasy, mystery thriller, women's fiction, historical fiction, pretty much you name it. And it's super fun. I love this. Jessica? Uh, My name is Jessica Brock, and I am a senior publicist at Berkeley. And I primarily work on our romance titles, but I also... uh, like to throw in some, you know, thrillers in the mix. You got to balance out the happy with the stabby, you know, <laughs> that's usually, that's my bread and butter, I would say. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> How about you, Erin? Tell us a little bit. Uh, uh, so I'm Erin Galloway. I'm the deputy director of publicity for Berkeley. Um, my bread and butter is definitely romance and women's fiction, uh, though I do work on a few things outside of that. Um, for example, uh, I'm Laurel K. Hamilton's longtime publicist, and I love her books. And they're sort of that fantastical mix of um, hard-boiled, like, crime novel, uh, urban fantasy, a little bit of horror, a lot of relationship drama thrown in. I mean, she's your original kind of genre buster. I love this. Oh my gosh, I need to check her out. So <laughs> you just gave me one new author to add to my TBR. Um, so this question I tend to ask to our publisher partners, because a lot of book reviewers, a lot of books and rumors have questions about like, what is it like to work with the publisher? So from your side of point of view, what do you want to see from book reviewers and books and grammars or any type of book influencers? Like what kind of things you're looking for? What do you want them to do? You know, what's your wish list? I would say usually kind of like the top thing that we look for is an engagement, um, whether the way apparently how social followings work, there are such things as micro influencers. I didn't realize that was a thing, but you have, you may not necessarily have like a bajillion followers, but you have a really, really engaged audience. And so I think along with follower count, engagement, um, steady posting, and, you know, like, do you like our books? That also helps. Um, but like, that's generally the kind of thing that we look for. Um, and yeah, so it, we also, I would also say like, oh, we're usually a little more, um, we look for people who have been like active, I guess, or so for like a year or longer, just because we do understand what a time commitment It takes to be a blogger, an Instagrammer, a booktuber, a book talker. It's it's a lot. And we appreciate everything they do. So for somebody to have stuck with it for a year or longer, that's usually a pretty good sign to us that we can invest in them and send them great books. Erin, anything to add to that more eloquently? I mean, I think really what we're looking for is um, is kind of uh, gatekeepers and, um, you know, people that really want to be advocates for books. Mm-hmm. Um, so folks that will, um, you know, I don't want to put a religious spin on it, but essentially will evangelize, uh, you know, their followers and get excited um, about books that we're also excited about. Uh, that's really the hope, um, you know, that they'll be bringing more people. Um, to each of the books that we're talking about. And obviously, in order to do that, you know, you need an audience. I mean, I've made this joke for so many years that it's old and tired, but it is still accurate. If your only followers are your mom and your cat, then probably we can't send you a free book right now. But that could change later because the more your audience grows, the more invested, um, you know, people are in what you're talking about and the more excited they get you know, they continue to come. I mean, that's how an audience builds. Very few people start out with, you know, a thousand followers uh, overnight. Um, so also, yeah. if you do, what's your secret? Share it with us. Thanks. <laughs> right. Yes. We would all <laughs> like to know. Um, so yeah, we're just looking for people that are really invested in talking about books 
and we'd like to work with you. I mean, in terms of the nuts and bolts, um, the things that we always ask for is when you make a request, um, give us as much information as possible. Say, you know, what book you would like to read, why um, are you able to accept digital galleys? Great, tell us, you know, if you're on NetGalley, what is the email address NetGalley uses to communicate with you because then we can send you, um, you know, a widget or a link to download. Uh, and we'd also like to hear more about you. What do you tend to cover on your blog? How frequently do you post? Um, if you're a bookstagrammer, talk to us about that experience. We just wanna get to know you a bit, your preferences. Um, Cause really at the end of the day, what all of us are as publicists is book matchmakers. We try and match make the right book with the right uh, audience, you know, and we're just looking to find as many excited people to talk about our books as we can. I love that. You say book matchmaker, I say professional fangirl, but that's okay. <laughs> Either one is entirely accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and I see myself as a book pusher. I'm like, I just want to push books. I'm like, here's your, here's your book, here's your book, here's your book, you know? So it is, it is a, it's a professional relationship that we just like, we're just evangelizing books. We're telling you like, this is what you should read next, you know? Awesome. So let's talk about some spring releases. You have some great releases come, that came out this spring. Like you have the Intimacy, Intimacy Experiment, you have the Kindred Spirit Supper Club. So talk to us about some of those releases that came out that people should add to their TBR yeah. right now, whether they can borrow from the library or they can just buy it right now. <laughs> yeah. Jess, do you want to talk about the Intimacy Experiment? When don't I want to talk about the Intimacy Experiment? Because I just, guys... It, it warms my dead heart. It's so, it's so squishy and soft and wonderful. And also like I would burn the world down for Naomi Grant. Just mm -hmm. she's one of my favorite fictional characters to just like kind of exist in the last few years. Um, and what makes Rosie such a talented writer is that we met this one side of Naomi in The Roommate. And everybody fell in love with her and she was, you know, ballsy and brash. She knew what she wanted and everybody was like, yes, Team Naomi. And then in the intimacy experiment, we get to see this entire other side of her, but that's just as wonderful. And you get to like see her as an entire person. And then you also get to see her fall in love with a squishy hot rabbi. And it's just, it's, it's wonderful. Um, yeah. Also she's, I, it's it's hard to like she's who I would love to be in real life like somebody who is just that secure in themselves and knows what they want but is also like okay in admitting there are things that she doesn't understand and all this kind of stuff so I just in terms of character development the intimacy experiment is one of my all-time favorites and I highly recommend everybody read it um let's see I mean, I could wax poetic about that one forever. Let's see. Um, but I also thoroughly enjoyed, we had two historical romance debuts that I worked on this spring, A Lady's Formula for Love by Elizabeth Everett and The Duke Undone by Joanna Lowell. Uh, the Duke Undone actually just came out a couple of weeks ago and A Lady's Formula for Love came out in February. Um, a Lady's Formula for Love was the start of a series that focused on um, I guess kind of like a club of women who basically decided that they were like, we're going to have a social club, but it's actually, we're all scientists and we're inventing super cool things. And it's all these like wonderfully intelligent women. And then the like leader of the group, she is doing something research and coming up with a weapon for the queen, obviously. And, but then things start to get dangerous. And so she's assigned a bodyguard. And so it's got bodyguard romance trope, which I loved. Um, and he was like super into her brain, just like she would go on these like rambles and he had no idea what she was understanding, but he would be hypnotized by it. And I was like, yes, that's just, you know, you love her brain and it's wonderful. And in the Duke Undone um, is follows, she's Lucy Coover is a painting student on her way home, I guess, one night and stumbles over a naked man in an alley, whoopsies, and obviously it's the first naked man she has ever seen, and she's like, oh my goodness, what can I do to help this poor man? 
I cannot touch him. Uh, but, so she covers him and she's like, God speed. Uh, but obviously she can't stop thinking about him. And so she ends up incorporating his form into this like kind of Greek retelling painting. He, somewhere down the road, ends up seeing it and is like, hey, I know that face. That's my face. How did this end up here? Um, and so through just kind of like a little comedy of errors, they end up finally meeting. And, you know, there's the whole many more factors, um, but she doesn't put up with any of his stuff. And he is just kind of like learning how to be his own man at the same time. And it's really, it's really, really beautiful. Highly recommend. So, yeah. That was I, enough. I spoke a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and those two more TBR. <laughs> Um, oh, well, because you mentioned kindred spirits, I have to bring that one up because I feel such a special connection to this book because I read it during the pandemic and I like the character, um, moved home with my parents. It's just that I moved home as a result of the pandemic, uh, and hello, I'm still here, uh, over a year later, but, uh, I can really sympathize, uh, with the main character, Sabrina, who returns to her parents' home, in this case, uh, in the Wisconsin Dells. And, you know, she's now jobless, really trying to start over and, and really feeling very uncomfortable. She has a lot to confront when coming home, some high school frenemies and, um, you know, what we'd call old ghosts, only in her case, the ghosts are literal um, because she comes from, you know, a family line of women that are able to interact with ghosts and essentially help those ghosts complete, um, whatever their business is on earth. Uh, and there's one ghost that has stuck with her, her whole life. And I mean, she's the best ghost ever, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so she doesn't know why this ghost has stuck with her, but she's really been, um, kind of a best friend forever. And while she's home, you know, reintegrating into life there. Uh, and let me just say life there includes a lot of fabulous food. Do not read this book without a snack, like five snacks nearby. I'm just being honest. Um, so she goes to a supper club because those are still a thing, which is amazing. And I don't know why we don't have more of them all over the country. I digress. She goes to a supper club and meets the handsome and fabulous supper club owner as you do, and a romance ensues. Now, I mean, I'm not going to say that I would like to be the character in this book, but I want to be the character in this book because I want my own Ray that will make me fabulous cocktails. The Wisconsin Dells sound like absolute paradise. And I've already told Amy Reichert that I would like to schedule a visit when I feel safe flying again, um, because the book was delightful. If you haven't read Amy, please do. I mean, I read her very first book, um, uh, which I absolutely loved, um, you know, Coincidence uh, of the Coconut Cake. And it was marvelous. And ever since then, I've read all of her books. If it has to do with food and Amy's written it, I'm in. Um, so I can't recommend highly enough. And uh, the other book that I have to recommend from spring, brand new release, is Jesse Q. Satanto's Dial A for Aunties. This is the book that broke my pandemic reading block way back when, <laughs> last spring, uh, when we got it in on submission. And I remember telling my boss that I would do anything, and I really did mean anything, to get this book and work on it myself. Uh, and I was so thrilled when we got this book because it is, I mean, it's uh, Crazy Rich Asians meets Weekend at Bernie's. And you, you can't say that very often. That's a pretty unique spin. Um, so a young uh, Chinese Indonesian photographer, uh, Mehdi, she uh, goes on, reluctantly goes on a date, a blind date that you know, the women in her family have set her up on and oops, he dies while she's on the date. You know, what, I mean, what do you do? You know, you're already annoyed with your mother and your aunties that they set you up on this like frustrating date. So you call them because how do you get rid of a body? And they all come up with a plan, which is foiled like absolutely immediately. Um, the body winds up coming to a very fancy resort off the coast of California where they are supposed to put on a wedding for a billionaire client. How do you 
hide a body on an island resort, get rid of it. What happens when your lost love just happens to be at the wedding as well? How do you like avoid murder charges, get back the love of your life and keep your mom and aunties from killing each other? It's a lot to ask in one day. So the book is absolutely fabulous. I mean, I laughed so hard. I had tears streaming down my face. My parents walked down the hall to check on me because they could not figure out what was happening, why I was cackling so much. Um, I mean, it is, it's spectacular. That's really all I can say about the book. And I don't want to give too much more away because like you have to read the crazy hijinks for yourself. Um, but it is well worth the read. And I just say like, probably don't drink too much water while reading this one. Cause you'll snort it right out. <laughs> and kindred spirits comes out tomorrow. That's right. It does. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. So let's talk about some summer titles. So what's coming up? What, which titles are you looking forward to bring to, you know, coming for the summer? I'm a big fan of some of the um, books that Steph is working on. So I'm going to let her kick this one off. Yes, I will jump in here because I am super, super excited about some of our summer titles. So first up, The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton is incredible. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Um, Basically, it is Regency women, just a bunch of ladies but they are also magic and they fly houses as pirates with their magic. It's incredible. And it's a romance, of course. So the love interest is trying to kill the heroine and she's trying to kill him as well. But then of course they're obviously attracted to each other and it's amazing. Um, And yeah, it's just so funny. The humor is incredible. I was laughing the entire time I was reading it and yeah amazing um and then also dead dead girls by nikessa afia is a historical mystery that i'm working on that i'm super excited about it is a whodunit but it features diverse and queer characters as the main character is a young black woman living in 1920s harlem and she's trying to catch a serial killer who is targeting black girls in her community so it's super rich in the description of the setting um you feel like you're there with her and I'm just like in love with Louise's character in general she was so fun to read about and I promise you will not want to wait to read the next story once you're done with it (laughs) is it gonna be one of those books that I'm gonna email you and immediately be like I need the next book right now (laughs) definitely very much so that same with Wisteria Society both of them you will want to email me right after oh my gosh I love this um and you have Heart and Soul Royals Next Door you got a couple other books coming up um this summer so it's like a it's a busy and people will be on vacation so exactly yeah Heart and Soul comes out May 25th and it is uh book one of a duology um and the next one that comes out is Soulmates. So like, sorry, I love word puns. It's, they're my absolute favorite. And so the titles of these books just make me very, very happy in a very nerdy way. Um, and it's written by Jen Frederick. And it's kind of like um, like a romantic K-drama. Mm-hmm. But I would say with like a little more drama, a little mm-hmm. heavier on the drama, which I love. I'm one of those people. I'm like, get my popcorn. And I'm like, yes, give me the drama. People always ask her, like, hey, do you want to hear some gossip about people you don't know? And I'm like, absolutely. It's my favorite. Um, so that's kind of what I feel like this book is, but it's also very rich in like details about soul and food. And it's, it's wonderful. Highly recommend. But so it is just FYI, everybody going in. The HEA does happen in book two. So like, do not be discouraged, friends. We will not let you down. It is a romance. It's just a longer one. Um, And then people we meet on vacation, Emily Henry just dazzled everyone last year with Beach Read. And like, oh my gosh, who didn't didn't want a Gus? Little precious nerd. So cute. Um, 
So people, I know people are very, I'm actually saving that one for vacation weekend. <laughs> like, it's a good vacation. Fun. Vacation. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that like full vaccination vacation where I'm be like, yes, hello world. And I'm going to read this book and then ignore the world while I do it. Uh, <laughs> what we do. Um, but I'm also particularly excited for the next Jasmine Guillory that comes out in July, just because summer equals Jasmine happy times in my head like her books are just so fun and they make the world a better place and I cannot wait for this one to be out in the world and same with um the next bromance book club book by Alyssa K Adams isn't it bromantic um and this one is the Russian book it's Vlad book and it's he's such a softy he's like the biggest cinnamon roll and loves romance novels and married his childhood best friend so that she could get an education in the States, but they like haven't seen each other in years because she got into college in Chicago and he's been in Nashville playing hockey. And this like whole thing comes up where they have to spend some time together and they're just really, really cute. And they like go off and speak Russian only to each other when they're around their friends and everybody's like, ah, ah you're so cute. It's, it's really, and it's everything that I wanted from the Russians book. It's, it's really delightful. And there's a guy in there called the cheese man. And we'll just, I'll leave it at that. There's a character called the cheese man. It's beautiful. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> oh, so exciting for the Russian book. <laughs> <Is that what? laughs> it's been hinted for so long. You're like, you just need to have it. You know? <laughs> So let's chat about some backlist titles. Which some Berkeley authors that have some backlist titles that we should check out? That you know, you're like realizing you're like these are hidden gems that we should look for. Mm-hmm. Oh well, I love to talk about hidden gems in the backlist because there are so many. I'm. Um, I always tell people that if you want to binge a series, pick up any Nalini Singh series. Mm-hmm. I mean, be prepared because you will not be able to stop. And I know this because every person that I tell to pick up a Nalini series comes back to me like, oh, Aaron, now I can't read anything else. I only want to read this. I know it's really good. Um, And I mean, of course, I I absolutely love her side changeling series, which is the first one she started. And and I still love it deeply uh, as well as her Guild Hunter series. And the newest book in her Side Changeling series, Last Guard, uh, comes out this July. And I think the reason that I love these two series so deeply is that Nalini is one of the most impressive plotters I have ever read. I mean, it, it no one else that I have read has been able to plant the tiniest of clues in book one or two that pays off like 17 books later. It's pretty unreal, um, the level of uh, detail and the plotting that she does in a way that feels so organic to the story. I mean, I'm completely, you know, enraptured with the characters, so I don't always notice, like, oh, she's obviously planting a seed for later. Um, I notice it a little bit more now because I've been reading her for a long time but I really didn't recognize at the beginning and I've reread her books many times. So now when I go back, there are times that I think, oh my God, she really did this in book two. It's just, it's incredible what she's able to do. And her characters are so fully developed. They're they're people that you just want to go back to over and over again. Um, I never get tired of reading her. Um, So I highly recommend Nalini's Backlist. And um, and another author who is also writing like fabulous um, uh, kind of romantic mysteries at the moment, Sherry Thomas, uh, she wrote some just gorgeous uh, historical romances. And what will go down as my favorite Sherry Thomas book is Ravishing the Heiress, she took the marriage of convenience trope and just turned it on its ear. And this is probably my favorite marriage of convenience book ever. Um, You know, our hero and heroine are forced into a marriage of convenience. And though the heroine um, is attracted to the hero and cares about him immediately, um, he is in love with someone else 
And she, you know, essentially decides that they are going to become friends because that's the only thing that's possible for them. And they develop this beautiful relationship over the years of their marriage. Um, You know, very close friendship. She helps him with business. They are true partners in every sense of the word, um, except he has regular affairs and she doesn't. Um, She's the one that tends to point out to him, I think you might want to end it with this person. It seems like the relationship has run its course or she would steer him toward a particular lady that she thought he would do well with. Um, But deep down, she's always been in love with him and he's been completely clueless. So when um, his lost love, the very first woman he ever loved and that he believes he's still in love with, when she comes back, uh, his wife, you know, realizes that, okay, um, he's probably going to leave me and kind of starts preparing herself for this. Um, but what neither of them expect is that they've developed this incredible relationship together. It wouldn't be so easy for him to just walk away from that. And he starts to see her in an entirely different light and watching him fall in love with her and really understand that he's been doing that, you know, little bit by little bit for seven years is just the most beautiful, like heart squeezing, intimate tale. Um, I absolutely love that one. Any of Sherry's backlist books are are incredible because she's a gorgeous writer, but this will always be uh, my favorite Sherry book. So I, I can't recommend highly enough. Just, I read the first book in a series. I know I'm like, it's the next book that I have to read. So I'm yes. just so excited. Now you're like, got me so excited. I need to read that next. <laughs> <laughs> so I love this. So, um, so thank you, Stephanie, Jessica, and Aaron for being on the show. Oh, well, thank you so much for having us. I mean, we love talking about books. We could talk about them all day long. Every, In fact, we do. We talk about books all day long, every day. We're literally paid to do it. Yes, I totally it. do. It's, it's the best part. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for having us. I know we've had a number of our authors on your show and you've been such a wonderful host for them all. So thank you so much for just being so thorough and doing what you do and spreading the love of romance. It's wonderful. Hello, if you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For book recommendations, author interview archives, and other fun book resources and tips, please visit watchreadnextblog.com. The Watch Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Network. To discover new shows to listen and love, please visit frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.